Okay, so um, it's one o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Lisa Weddle. I work here at the Maine Library in the Bridge at Maine, our Learning and Literacy Center. Um, I want to welcome you all to our program today, um, How to Identify and Avoid Scams, with our partners um, Marisol Ferrante and Bridget Brown from the Independent Living Resource Center, San Francisco. Um, so welcome, Bridget and Marisol. Um, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Hi, uh, my name is Bridget Brown, and I'm the Economic Empowerment uh, Coordinator here at Independent Living Resource Center. I do uh, workshops about financial literacy. Uh, I also help people to navigate when they are newly disabled, I let, let them know how to navigate the benefit system with uh, social security benefits, workman's comp, uh, state disability insurance, just letting people know what's out there and their options. And I also uh, uh, do uh, benefits counseling when people are on social security benefits and wanna return back to work. I let them know how their benefits will be affected. Uh, what I forgot to say is ILRC, Independent Living Resource Center San Francisco, is a disability organization. Uh, and we do a lot of advocacy. We have an attorney who helps with uh, landlord tenant disputes, also helps people through the process of initiating an application with Social Security if they uh, feel that they are disabled and would uh, like to apply for benefits, we have an attorney that helps with that. Um, she also helps with housing, landlord tenant disputes, if I'm sorry if I said that already, but uh, she also helps with immigration, uh, letting you know how to get a green card and stuff like that. Um, we also have um, Marisol, who helps with uh, assistive technology. We have a device lending library uh, uh, with uh, assistive technology. And if you uh, need assistive technology, you can borrow it from our agency if we have it. If we don't have it, we'll give you options of where you can get it. Uh, we're starting up a new program where uh, if you had a device and you wanted to buy it yourself and you couldn't afford it, uh, we have options about how you can go about getting a loan or using our program to uh, save for it. And we pay a portion uh, of the device that you're trying to get, depending on what the device is and what you need it for, uh, we could probably help with that. We have a community activities uh, program where uh, we get tickets for baseball games, movies, plays, uh, all kinds of uh, activities. Even we have movie night here at Independent Living Resource Center or do it via Zoom. Uh, we also have uh, counseling in different languages, Spanish and Mandarin and Cantonese. That's uh, about uh, a, a little bit about Independent Living Resource Center. We do more things, but whatever you uh, would like to know about, just call our agency. We're here in San Francisco and we serve San Francisco residents. Uh, our number is 415-543-6222. Leave a message and someone will call you back. Okay, go ahead, Marisol. Hi, this is Marisol Ferrante. And I am the assistive technology specialist here at Independent Living Resource Center, San Francisco. And today we're going to talk about various types of scams and how to avoid them. And also we'll give you uh, what to do if you are scammed. You know, with the holidays coming up, scammers are becoming 
more and more clever about trying to fool us into falling for them. And as we develop ways to combat these scams, they're coming up with new ways to even better ways to trick us. And so I'm gonna talk about the more common types that we see often. Like you could get an email and it tells you click on this link to get whatever it is or to avoid, like they could say, we're from your local uh, 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 elect, uh, what do you call it? Uh, utility, uh, we're from your utility company and we see that you have an outstanding balance. You need to pay it right away or your utilities are gonna be cut off. They always use a sense of urgency so that you don't have a chance to think. And then they'll tell you to pay by, by uh, wiring the money or get gift cards and pay. So anytime they do that, you know it's a scam because the utility company will never ever tell you to do that. And so there's also, they, they will try it with a phone call and they have started using the AI technology. So if they, if you get a robocall and they say, is this so-and-so, don't say yes. Because if you say yes, they can clone that voice and add it to something else that, you, that you're saying yes to, which you really did not say yes to. And so um, they also will have for phone, they, 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 using AI technology, they have ways of having a voice that sounds like a relative. And I don't know how they do this, but they have started doing it. So you will get a call, like if you're a grandparent, you'll get a call from one of your grandchildren saying, I'm in trouble, please don't call my parents, um, send money to the jail at blah, blah, blah. At this, uh, they'll give you a link to click on to send the money to. And it sounds like the person, so you you think it is. So what I suggest you do is say, wait a minute, I'm, hang up and call that person. And if that person doesn't answer, call their parents to find out if it's really true. Because most of the time it is a scam. And that's what they call imposter scams. They'll be calling from like your bank, the, S, the social security office, None of these entities will ever ask you to pay rapidly by credit, I mean, by uh, 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 gift cards or uh, wiring the money. Because once you wire the money or get gift cards, there's no way to recover it because that's just like cash out the door. So if anybody ever does that, that is definitely a scam. And they've also found new ways of getting your identity. They steal your identity. And they do that so they can open credit cards in your, in your uh, name, open credit in your name. Or if they get arrested, they can give your name and then you'll have the record and not them. So what, um, when you get those uh, pre-approved credit things in the mail, shred them, tear them up, or wait until the expiration date happens before you throw them away. And there, you can have that stopped. And so it's called opt out of pre-approved credit offers. So you can go to optoutprescreen.com and there you can fill out a form so that you can opt out of it. And they all have instructions that tells you what to do. And so um, there's also the type of scams where you're on your computer and suddenly a pop-up comes up and says, you have a, you have a, a malware on your computer and you need to contact this number or click on this link and we'll help you fix this problem. Now, if you really are having a problem with your computer, you might fall for it and think that they're trying to help you. 
So don't fall for it. That never that is never ever a way to get your computer fixed. So what you should do is just get out of there, restart your computer, and then see if there's still a problem because most problems are solved by restarting the computer. If, however, you start the computer and the problem is still there, I would contact from your phone, from your actual phone contacts, your local tech support place, whether it's at the good guys at Best Buy or Apple or whatever, I will contact them. You don't want to contact anybody through any links that you get through a, a text or an email. Never do that. And now they have, well, they've been having this, but it's becoming more and more common where they have what's called card skimmers at ATM machines. So when you go to use an ATM machine, thoroughly inspect the machine. There shouldn't be anything on the machine that's loose or poorly uh, aligned when you type in your, your information, like your, when you type in your security code when you put your card in. If anything's loose or doesn't look right, let the person at the place that you're using the ATM machine know that there's something wrong with it. It should be solid and unable to be moved. Because when they, if you do put your things in, those card skimmers will, will track everything you do and then they will have all your input so that they can go ahead and use that card number and your, your uh, special PIN number and then just drain your account. Also, when you go to buy gift cards, you should check the gift card packaging because what they've been doing is they get, they go get, they just grab a bunch of gift cards, they open them up, they get all the numbers off of it, then they they replace the uh, the strip over the over the code, then they glue it back together with a hot glue gun. So you can tell usually by looking at it because it won't be aligned perfectly like the machine does. And you'll see like residue of, of like hot glue gun, glue sticking out somewhere. It's not perfectly aligned in the back. And if you decide you wanna buy a gift card and you're not sure, you can always have the clerk check to see if this card has been tampered with. And this is one that just came out like within the last six months. People who've had um, their airplane ticket, they purchase an airplane ticket and they're ready for the flight and they get a, a notice that their flights will be delayed. Well, scammers have found a way that if you go on Google search to search the, the number for your airline, instead of going to the airline, it'll go to the scammer. So you have to be careful. So one guy that I know, he called, he, he did the Google search, he found the number for United Airlines. So he called them up. He said, well, I want to change my flight since it's going to be late. I want to change it to another number. They started asking him for his credit card number, which they should already have, and asking him his name and his social security number, and they don't do that. So then he started to think something's wrong here and he realized it was a scam. So he had to go look in his own context. And I think it's on your ticket, the number for the airlines. And if you, if you can't find it, I would just go to the airline and find out because you don't wanna be taken by a scammer because they're getting so clever. And then they have those companies that are questionable that give you free trial offers and those are mostly on online so when you get those do your research and check to see if that that company has been linked with any complaints or scams let's see did i talk about imposter ones like 
a few months ago, I got an email supposedly from my boss. I spent money, so I can't, um, uh, I don't have time right now. So could you please go to, to do this for me really quick? And it, that's all it said. And I'm like, what? So I knew that it wasn't from my boss because she would be specific to tell me what she wanted. So that was a scam. Some people have said it. They even have asked them, can you go to get gift cards for, for, my, for my coworker because I can't do it. So anytime someone asks you to get gift cards, that's a scam. And if you get a phone call, a text or an email, never give out any personal information only give out personal information if you initiated the call yourself because no legitimate company will ask any of that information. And so just delete the email, the phone call, the text message, and then call the company yourself to find out. Because I got a, a text six months ago telling me that I needed to update my my uh, Medicare card. And so I called my insurance company and said, did you guys send a text asking me to update my Medicare card because I think they're trying to scam me? And they said, no, that was really us. So sometimes, you know, it's good to check even if, if it turns out to be true, just to make sure you don't get scammed. Let's see what else. Um, the best way to uh, avoid getting stuck with a, a scam is if you do pay something, pay with a credit card because credit cards offer you protections and they have, you're not liable if you can prove that it was a scam. So you just contact your credit card company and tell them that this happened in this amount on this date, and then you'll get your money back. But if you use gift cards or wire the money, that's it. There's no way to get it back. And so for a lot of our devices, you know, they always try to get in with malware uh, viruses. So the best way to protect against that is to keep them updated because the updates are to keep the security at the highest level. Also, up, uh, change your passwords regularly. And now we have like, most people have about 200 to 300 passwords they have to remember. So they tend to use the same password for a lot of things and that is not recommended because if the hacker breaks into one, they will try that same password on all the other things. And you can get a, a password manager and some of them cost about $8 and, or a little over that. But what I do is I just have a, a, a thing that I wrote like I make a sentence out of it, but I don't put all the letters and I put dots in between so that I know what the sentence is, but it's not easy for other people to guess. So I keep that as a running record so that I just go look to see what the password is. And also, if you do forget a password, they do give you the opportunity to say you forgot your password and then you, they'll, they'll send them your email and they'll email you a way to to do your password again. And also, if a hacker happens to do it, they will also email you and say, did you request a new password? If you did not, you need to get in there and change your password immediately because someone else has hacked your account. So you have to watch out for stuff like that. And so, um, if you shop online, shop with uh, trusted companies that you know 
like Amazon, or BestBuy.com. If you get an email from them saying there's a special deal and it looks too good to be true, look at the email address. Hover your uh, mouse over the address because you will see, instead of saying Amazon.com, it'll say Amazon and it'll have a bunch of X, Y, Z, 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 all these weird letters in there that then you'll know it is not really from Amazon. And um, also in the email, look for gram grammar and spelling mistakes because these guys are in a rush. They don't, they, they send these out to thousands and thousands of people thinking that at least 10 will bite or maybe 20 will bite. So check for grammar mistakes and spelling mistakes. And the old adage, if it looks too good to be true, then that's probably what it is. Too good to be true. So the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission, they are trying to crack down on these scammers. So they want to know if you've been scammed. And so I would, even if it's so embarrassing, it's still worth it to, to, to send it to them so that they can try to stop these guys. So one place is, this is the website, reportfraud.ftc.gov. So when you go there, you follow the instructions on how to report a scam that has happened. And we also suggest that you check your credit report regularly. You get a free annual report once a year. And so you can call or, or go online and fill out the form. So the phone number to check your credit report is 877 Three two two eight two two eight, and the website to go to fill it out online is annualcreditreport.com. And so, if you want to opt out of these pre-approved credit offers. Oh, did I already give you guys that? I think I did. Well, the phone number is 888-5-OPT-OUT. And so it, the, the, five, the opt out turns into the number 888-567-8. 688. But if you remember 8885 opt out, that way you can call and, and follow the instructions on how to opt out. Or you can go to optoutprescreen.com. And so if you're sick of those robocalls and you can't um and you can't tell if it's a scam or not you can get on a do not call list. So you can go to do not call.gov and they'll help you uh, fill out, I mean, they'll give you instructions on how to fill out the form to be on the do not call list. Or you can call 888-382-1222. Also the Better Business Bureau has a um, a scam tracker so that you can check to see if any of the companies that you're dealing with is involved in a scam. So that would be bbb.org forward slash scam tracker. That way you can track, you can check to see if whoever you're dealing with is involved in a scam or fraud. I think that's it. 
So and just remember when you go, uh, when you get calls, telephone calls that uh, sometimes there be, I think you did this one, they do voiceovers, uh, record you when you answer the phone. Yeah, that's why I said, don't say the word yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So someone called me the other day and they go, is this Muddy Soul? And I go, who's calling? Because if you say yes and they're recording it, then they could put it into a thing like, do you agree to pay $500 a month for a blah, 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 blah. And then they put in your word yes in your voice. Do we have any questions today? Um, yeah, so we have one question in the Q&A box here. Um, someone is asking, how can you find out if, more, if a mortgage company is legitimate? Two people I know of got a notice that their mortgage company, which, Wells Fargo, got taken over by a, quote, Mr. Cooper mortgage and to send payments to Mr. Cooper, which has a website. Well, that, first of all, they would never do that. They would never have you send it to a personal person. So that's definitely a scam. So if you're in doubt, I would just call Wells Fargo. Get, uh, get the uh, number off of your statement or your bill. Don't use the one that they provided. And if anybody has any questions, you can raise your hand and ask your question. Um, we can unmute you. Well, I guess everybody's ready for the holidays. This is a time of giving and sometimes uh, the scammers really come out this time of year. So hopefully everybody's ready. Oh, I see we have a question from Laurette. Uh, let me, where are you? Try to unmute you. Okay, go ahead. Ah, uh, hi, yes. What can be done about phone scammers? Besides using www.donotcall.gov. If you get on the phone, if you, if you get a phone call and it's a scammer, just hang up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because okay, I'll I don't, unless you are, unless you are um, uh, really, really good at this, I wouldn't advise you to be engaged with them but I like to play around with them mm -hmm. because I know they're scamming me they mm -hmm. called me and told me we're going to come repossess your car because you owe a thousand dollars on your car insurance I said oh yeah you want to come get my car oh cool how do you how do you know you're going to like my car you know I play around with them and then they get mad and hang up <laughs> I don't even have a car, mm -hmm. so. But I don't suggest you do that unless you are really, really good at avoiding them, so you don't slip up and say something that could get you into trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. <clears throat> thank you. Mm -hmm. We also have. Um, uh, William wants to thank you for all this information, and it's a lot of information. I've tried to keep up with your um, information and putting some of the links and phone numbers in the chat. Um, and we will have this uh, re this program will be uploaded into our YouTube so that people can get a chance to rewatch it and re-listen to all the information that's being um, given here. Um, I'm wondering if you guys can answer, answer this other question um, about crypto. What can I do if, what can you do if you're scammed uh, by crypto investments, which can uh, delete one's life savings? The unfortunate thing is that law enforcement and laws about 
scamming have not caught up to the crypto world. So I think that if that happens, the, the people that I know are, were out of luck. And that's why I just don't get involved with it until it starts to be more lucrative and laws get written about it and ways for people to get their money back because that's just like handing cash over. And they usually say, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Um, oh, here's a, a question. Um, I don't know if uh, you guys can answer this, but um, there was a question about any anti-malware -mal software that you could recommend for seniors, especially for, for, people, for people's computers. That one, there is one that I um, have been recommending, but I can't remember it offhand. Let me see. Let me look it up real quick. Hold on. There's one called Avira or Avira. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's A, V as in Victor, I, R, A. And that's one that I use um, on my Mac. It's for Mac and iOS. It's for Mac um, and iOS. I don't know if it works on PCs. And they also have VPNs for it. Let's see if there's a lot of people use um, Norton, but that costs a lot. And I think they have a, a, a free version. And McAfee is pretty good. There's a lot of other ones, but I guess I would um, call like the Apple Store or Best Buy to find out which ones they recommend. Um, so it looks like this might be going back to that crypto um, uh, scam uh, question. And they were wondering if the FBI is able to help. Is that an entity that, like, can you report to to them? I would report them to the FTC because they deal with any kind of like consumerism type scams. That's the Federal Trade Commission. And that would be that report fraud dot FTC dot gov, right? Yes. Great. Great. Um, I'm going to check in with my colleague over in the learning studio. Um, I don't know if there's any questions live today, maybe. Uh, I don't see any hands up. And the, the video will be available on the library's YouTube page. Um, I will put that in the link again in the chat. Lisa? Oh, yes. Natalie. Hey, hey, this is us in the learning studio. We do have a question yeah. here from Christine. Give me one moment to give her the mic. Here you go, Christine. Okay. Thank you so much. I think that this scam very important. I, I Yesterday, I started, started today teaching scan, a, a printer scan, so I make a mistake. So sorry about today, I delay. Uh, I have a question for you. Because these days, I watch uh, you. Uh, YouTube uh, scan uh, through AI, uh, through AI uh, te technology, you know, scan, they can imitate the uh, 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 human sounds and the human picture and the uh, through, uh, through a cell phone. So uh, everybody watch cell phone, that is video cell phone can what can see that uh, sound and uh, that picture. I think uh, how how can we avoid uh, this kind of happen and uh, and uh, get a scan from uh, from big guy? Can you understand my question? AI AI right now is very very uh, popular, but AI use the scan is very uh, is really terrible and uh, awful. C uh, can you avoid uh, this kind of case to happen in the future? So, Christine, let me make sure I understand. Are you talking about um, 
concerns about AI scamming you when you're yeah. online? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cell phone. Through the cell phone. And the, and the picture. Uh, that a daughter in the picture, uh, a, a mother's daughter, uh, talk to another mother, say, uh, could you please um, uh, mail some money, how much money to... To that daughter, actually, uh -huh. that son and another picture is not a, that that mother's daughter. Yeah, yeah. So um, the question is about uh, artificial intelligence scamming people online. So uh, do our presenters, uh, Marisol and Bridget, do you have any um, information about how to avoid AI scams? Never give out your personal information. Um, if they contacted you and you didn't contact them, uh, all that makes a difference. It's just sometimes you just have to use common sense about things when people ask you about things. Uh, if it gets too personal and you don't feel like you initiated the uh, call or you didn't initiate uh, the questions that they're asking you, like your social security number, everybody knows, don't give that out. Uh, if they ask you, who, who is this? They called you, why don't they know who it is? You know, things like that. Just, uh, and artificial intelligence, it's, it's getting, uh, uh, there's always gonna be a scam uh, when it comes to any kind of new technology, just, uh, use you just try to uh use your best judgment that's all i can say about that and what with the phone they that's why i said don't say yes because they will use that that ai technology to to put the yes onto questions that you didn't even answer and they have ways of making it sound like it's your daughter calling and it really isn't. So that's when I would say, oh, I got to go. Let me call you back. And then you go and call that person. That way you will know if it's really them or not. And as far as like videos and like on your social media, be very careful about what kinds of pictures and videos you put on social media because the laws have not caught up to this AI technology. Like recently, there was a picture of uh, when the Barbie movie came out, there was a picture of uh, LeBron James in a pink skirt and pink sneakers and a pink sweater. And that was all done by AI. That wasn't even real. But it looked so real. So Unfortunately, the, the, the law has not caught up to this part of the, the AI scamming, you know, the way they do it. And so put you know, like basic photos up, maybe just your face. And I wouldn't even put videos on anymore because of the way these things are going. And then also put your social media uh, settings put to private so that only your friends can see and not other people, not good. Some people, a lot of people don't know this and they just have it free that anybody can open it up and look. And then they can take your photos. Even if you have something on there where they can't recopy the photo, they can do a screenshot and get the photo that way. Unfortunately, this is the world we live in, and that's just the law just has to catch up to that AI technology. San Francisco was the first um, city in the United States to ban facial recognition because of this, because it was scanning the wrong people. I mean, it was scanning people, but identifying them incorrectly. So, one guy who was a, a law enforcement officer was thought to be a criminal who robbed an old lady. And it found out that it wasn't him. So San Francisco banned that technology, which is part of the AI movement. 
Did that yeah. Um, that sounds that sounds really good. Um, oh, and we have another question. Um, uh, what is the track record when you report um, fraud and that kind of thing? Or what is the track record for getting your money back? Like uh, getting your money back from the bank or getting your money back after it's been, after you've been scammed? That I don't know. You would have to talk with the FTC about that. Yeah, once you've given out your credit card number, and uh, your, your debit card number. Um, sometimes if you act quickly, you can stop things from happening. Uh, if your car, if like if your credit card has an alert, like if anything is charged over hmm, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, you get an alert when it comes in. Uh, if you if it's fraud against you that way, maybe you could uh, uh, dispute it. But if you're giving it away freely and you're and you're approving of it, it's kind of hard to uh, get your money back from the banks and the credit cards. But if you use a credit card and you report it to the FTC, you have a good chance of getting it back. I don't know how long it takes, though. That's why they say credit card is the best way so that if you are scammed, you do have a good chance of getting it back. Okay, we have another question um, from Felipe. Go ahead. What about if you buy a gift card and there is a hacker or a scam and there is no funds in your gift card? Well, if you, if you buy a gift card, save your receipt so if, if you get there and there's no things you could take it back to the store you, you bought it and tell them then they can see where the card was uh where the money was spent because i had received a gift card for christmas like three years ago and when i went to open when i went to purchase something it said you have zero funds on this card so then we tracked it down and said the card was uh, uh, used in LA on such and such a date. And I said, I was not even in LA that day. I was here in San Francisco. And so the lady who bought the card was, they gave her a new gift card. They, she was able to get it back because she saved her receipt. But, be, but now when you go to buy it, have the clerk check the card before you even leave the store. Yeah, but sometimes somebody gave you the gift card and there is was already, there is no phone because oh, yeah. like, you, know, you know, like yesterday I saw in the news, a lot of people, a lot of cars in the Target was a, a switch it for somebody and they discovered to them and there was a thousand of cars. Yeah, so if that happens, if the person who gave you the card doesn't have the receipt, then it's just unfortunate. That's money gone. No. Oh, okay. So everybody who, from this day forward, if you buy a gift card, check the, the gift card packaging because when they put it back together, they cannot put it back the way, because those are machine, fact, machine factory sealed, those cards. When they put it back together, there's going to be indications that it was opened and put back together. Okay, so thank you. check those cards, and if you're unsure, you can have the clerk check them. I have uh, one more question. Go ahead, Felipe. You know, you want to say when they call you, never answer, yes, I am, because they can record it to you. I didn't get it exactly how is it. Excuse me, repeat the question. When they call you on the phone and you say, yes, I am, you say, they will say that because they can record that you and put like you on them some money. I think he's saying, why do you say not to say yes? And I think he needs to understand that if you do that, you could use that recording to say yes to other things. 
Could you elaborate on that? Is that think it's his question? Yeah. You don't say yes to things when you answer the phone. Is this like if they say, is this Felipe Martinez? You say, who's calling? You don't say yes. Because yeah. if you say yes and they record that yes, you owe me, are you going to pay me a thousand dollars? Or, or is this, or they could call up your bank and they could say, is this Bridget Brown? And you say, and they could just use the recording to say, yes, how can I help you? You owe us, or can you give us, they could, they could just identify themselves as you just by you saying yes. Okay. Thank you, Marisol. I have to go. My paratransit just came. It came early today, so I have to leave. Because if I, if, I, if I don't get on it, they'll give me a no-show. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, thank you, Marisol. Thank um, you. And Bridget, did you have anything else you wanted to, um, if you want to pop on and, and let us know any more about ILRC? Just that we're a disability organization located here in, in, in San Francisco. Uh, most of our uh, work that we do is by appointment only. And... Um, yeah, if you ever need anything, have any disability questions, or uh, you're new, newly disabled, trying to navigate the system, just give us a call. We're here, Independent Living Resource Center, San Francisco. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, you guys are a Richie. wonderful asset. Thank you. And thanks for everybody for joining us today. And uh, thanks to all the people in the learning studio. And we hope to have you guys back again sometime.